one day to become the First Lady. But in the 1900s, wasn't Lillian Russell the First Lady? Or was she just Diamond Lil? That was the time when Pop got his new automobile and chased everyone off the sidewalks. Yet, if it was serious and you had to get there, you still relied on horses. At the time, the newspaper editors just didn't believe the stories about what was going on at this place, what's it called? Kitty Hawk, the brothers Wright. Heck, the guys claim to actually fly in a machine heavier than air. It stands to reason without gas bags or something like that. It just can't be done. What do they think they are? Birds or something? No, oh, not even worth sending a reporter down. Now they say that at 4th and Main, there's a man biting a dog. That's more like a story. But as the days passed and they couldn't find the man biting the dog, the boss sent a man down to Kitty Hawk. You know, just for the laughs. And what did the man see? He saw Wilbur Wright take seat in a complicated arrangement of wood, wire and bicycle chips. And then... Sure, boss, sure, I want to keep my job. And I'm telling you, the guy actually flew, yeah, flew round and round and round just like a bird. So the world at last believed. But whether the world believed that what had happened at Kitty Hawk was destined to change that world out of all recognition, ah well, that was a real man bites dog. Edwardian summer, tranquil waters under white sails. When the weather is so fine, hard to believe that storms can exist. But somewhere on the east coast of Britain, a fishing fleet returns to its home port to tell about an attack made upon it by battleships, with shell damage to prove it. The Russian Navy, en route to its far east war with Japan, had nervously mistaken the drifters for Japanese torpedo boats, a most unfortunate error. In the face of a strong British protest, Tsar Nicholas apologized, for Russia viewed Britain as a powerful potential ally, and so one cloud dissolved. And Europe too was full of dark little clouds, the courts of the continent were busy with confidential comings and goings. Espionage. A French corporal is ceremoniously stripped and drummed out of the army for selling military secrets to a foreign power. Secret treaties and stolen plans. The fiction of the thriller writer becomes a reality. In Britain, few viewed the clouds seriously for so often had they dispersed. Though Lord Roberts, national hero, was outspoken in his gloomy forecasts, 
most people took such talk as mere propaganda for larger military budgets. To outward appearance, King Edward was still the complacent, easy-going monarch, everyone's favorite uncle. But behind the scenes, he worked ceaselessly for strong alliances. And Britain's nearest neighbor, France, becomes her closest friend. Slowly the lineup is set for the war that the king will not live to witness. So Britain moves along her familiar path with the serene confidence of life so well established that no one could ever believe it could be upset. But all the time the pace is quickening the petrol engine is not only here to stay, but off to there as well. International motor racing contests, particularly in France, provide the competition which makes for rapid mechanical progress. A split second halt for petrol, and then off again. And what to do with the empty can? Throw it away. Progress was not confined to the ground. The trail that the Wrights had blazed is wide open to a host of pioneers. Graham White, a great name in British aviation. Gustav Hamel, the German. Yes, the list is long and distinguished. Pergo, the Frenchman. First man in the world to loop the loop. Latham. Mechanical failure robbed him of being the first to fly the channel and to make it a British achievement. Cody, Blerio, Brabazon. Nothing can stop such air-crazy heroes. For them, the sky was the limit. At an air display in the United States, the new sport comes in for high-level patronage as one of the Wrights demonstrates what he and his plane can do, he arouses the interest of none other than President Theodore Roosevelt himself. A few more spectacular dives and swoops, and the President has made up his mind. Heedless of those who express doubts, he takes his seat in the Wrights plane. If they can do it, so can he at least as a passenger. A short hop and history is made again by the rights. Congratulations reign on the president. The first head of any state to fly in an aeroplane. Well done, sir. Great news. But bad news in Britain. The end of the Edwardian era. Behind the dead king, the last great parade of the regal. The Kaiser of Germany, the boy one day to be Edward VIII, Alfonso of Spain, heads and representatives from every state in the world. Pick them out for yourselves. You'll never see such a concourse again. French, Italian, Austrian, Chinese, Indian. Positively the last appearance of the greatest show on earth.
and behind the procession, the coach of Alexandra, the queen, the widow. And so Britain has a new king and queen, George V and Mary. But though George has all the intention of following the peacemaking and maintaining the world of his father, already events are moving too fast for him. Already there are other processions through the streets and cries of votes for women, as suffragettes demonstrate. Already men and women in great industrial cities are demanding better hours, higher pay and fairer shares, in growing unrest, in strikes and stoppages. The wealth of the haves is being besieged by the have-nots. Meanwhile, Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria pays a visit to Bosnia to that very Sarajevo, where soon the assassination of his son will spark off the First World War. Signs and portents. But never mind the portents, let's celebrate a coronation. With full ceremony, King George rides to Westminster Abbey for his crowning. But even in the midst of rejoicing, fire engines? Was it an omen? Movies and memories all mixed up together. The fact and the fiction. Dramas and comedies. Ah, the comedies. Those are what one remembers best. Was the illusion crazier than the reality? Father's first car. There was human drama in a nutshell. sneeze. Put pepper into the old man's handkerchief and let's see what happens. Whatever it is, lifelike, it's certain to be funny. thing in common. They all end in a knockabout. The motor skater. Science and progress. Elegant and dignified. 
now ending in mad farce. Fact and fiction mixed up in my memory.